Welcome to the State of Survival podcast. In this podcast, we discuss the survival game genre, its updates, game content, bugs and fixes that players interact with, and the overall community surrounding these kinds of games. I hope you folks are having a wonderful day, and I hope you enjoy sitting back and listening to it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the State of Survival podcast. This week, we are going to be covering the game Project Zomboid. We're going to be discussing its future updates and its possible content features that we're excited and we're hopeful to see come to full flourish in its coming updates. So let's go ahead and take a look at what Project Zomboid is overall. Project Zomboid is a survival game genre with an isometric perspective in a world where either the zombie virus has either just broken out or has progressed thoroughly. Now what's cool about this is that it is almost kind of like a sandbox mode where you can really choose and customize how everything works. The default settings are you start off I think probably a couple of days after the initial outbreak happens and you start to try to survive in a I believe it's over in uh, Kentucky that it, it has broken out in and you know it's fun because there's lots of things to loot and everything else and Project Zomboid is all about your choices. Because the game literally starts with, this is how I died. Because it's a story about how you actually play the game. It follows a very similar kind of thing, much like Dwarf Fortress. Where you know you're eventually going to die. It's all about what led up to it and how you eventually met your demise. And that's what a lot of people find fun and really enjoy about this game. So this week, we're going to be talking about crafting basements, possible NPCs, and animals in the future coming updates, as well as many more things. Let's go ahead and go over to my friend and fellow host, Jarl of Goats, and see what he's been up to recently. Oh, well, thank you very much for that dump. I am super excited because we actually got to play Project Zomboid on Thursday night, and that was an absolute blast. My favorite thing about Project Zomboid is definitely the fact that it's focused on role play. It's focused on realism. Even if you look at their patch notes or their plans for the future, even their blog posts, they all reinforce the idea that this is a story. It's your character's story. And that's the goal of the game. Um, but as far as this week, you're going to see that the schedule is very similar to last. Tomorrow, we're doing Dungeons & Dragons with my friend Dump Raw here. Thursday, we're going to be playing DayZ Vanilla 1.20, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Friday, we have our chat versus streamer uh, stream normally, but instead, I'm going to be playing with my stream team, the Pause Fellowship. Saturday, we have Fallout Tabletop RPG, and after that, Space Engineers, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Nice. Sounds like a very eventful and fun-packed week. I'm excited for tomorrow's uh, D&D. So, folks, I am going to tell you a little bit about what I did this last week. I was able to work on some of my mods, finally pushing out a fix and possible update to my leather crafting, as well as, as well as starting to tinker with my Melogen Forging update coming soon after 1.21 hits um, release. I'll give more details about that a little bit later. Also, folks, I did play some X4 Foundations over on my Twitch channel, and I felt like an idiot kind of stumbling around trying to figure some out. However, there are really nice people in that community, so if you ever do wish to try it yourself, going into their Discord did give me a lot of information, as well as the people in my chat. And then finally, yesterday, because I love Minecraft, I played a little bit of Minecraft, modded Minecraft, of course, but still some Minecraft. And uh, that was pretty much my week, besides, uh, you know, sitting around and hanging around in uh, some Namals comps uh, and situations like that. I uh, enjoyed myself and uh, had a lot of fun. So this week, we're going to be talking about, like I said earlier on, is Project Zomboid. We have the NPCs and underground crafting lore animals. There is so much to explore here, Yara. What do you think we should try to tackle first? Well, I definitely think NPCs should be last. One of the things that the developers are trying to make clear on their uh, blog posts, including an image of their timeline, is that the NPCs stage one event won't even happen until build 43. So for those of you who are expecting NPCs in build 42, it's highly unlikely you're going to see it. But there's a lot to build 42 that establishes the foundation for NPCs. 
that I think are quite exciting. Uh, animals, of course, being one of the uh, newer ones that they were talking about, not only livestock, but hunting, um, as well as the new crafting interface and the recipes they're talking about. And then speaking of uh, Minecraft, did you you play with the tech mod, right? Uh, yeah, definitely. Now, you, I think you just quickly mentioned that Project Zomboid has a timeline? Yes, they do. You can definitely check that out. It's not the one thing that they're stating, especially staff such as Enigma Gray on their Steam community posts, is that we're still several months out. They are pushing for 2023, but this isn't something that's just going to come up recently. Um, so they're going to be implementing these changes. They're going to be throwing them through extensive testing, uh, but we're likely not going to see this update until probably fall or winter of this year if Build 42 is released. Okay, very, very cool. Now you had a question about the uh, tech Minecraft thing, Bob. Yeah, I remember you uh, playing that with uh, another streamer, Scott Dog. Do you do you play with that normally? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, I love the progression of it. Uh, that's kind of one of my favorite things about some of these newer Minecraft mod packs is the progression. Well, the reason why I'm bringing it up is because it turns out the devs were inspired by that very same mod, and that's actually what they're bringing to the table when it comes to their crafting system that they're developing. They've played it extensively on Minecraft. They really love the way it works. And, uh, you know, right now in its current state, it's a little too bloated. They're going to try to simplify it. Uh, but it's great that they're taking inspiration from other games, much like how RimWorld took a lot of inspiration from Project Zomboid systems. They're really looking into how can they make their game more sustainable for the survival genre without just having to create new ideas from scratch or without being afraid to copy something that works. Now, it is quite interesting that you brought up that they took inspiration from Minecraft, and that is really cool to hear. Now, I think I remember that reading that they also... There have been some rumors, actually, I, I, I want to segue a little bit, that Project Zomboid was actually originally a mod for The Sims. Did you know this? I did not know that, but I, I wouldn't be surprised with how, when it released in 2011, like what you saw in it, what they were trying to achieve, I wouldn't doubt it at all. And it kind of feels like The Sims 1 with the way that furniture and stuff operates, so... Oh, that's really cool. Now, remember, folks, these are rumors that I just spoke about, but it is important to note the Minecraft stuff that y'all did speak about actually was in their most recent thing uh, when they were talking about Burn After Reading, I believe. And it was very interesting to hear that they drew inspiration or that they not necessarily 100% fell in love with these things, but they looked at them and were like, hey, you know what? I actually like how these mods turn Minecraft into a more, I'm actually building up my world and less about I'm just running around punching trees. And they kind of thought right. about Zomboid in that regard of, they wanted to expand Zomboid in a way where it felt like you were expanding upon your world and less about how fast can you get to the end goal. That, that's true. One of the things that they mentioned is they want to go beyond that six months after Mark. They want to potentially have years on down the road after the event. And by then, you would have people figuring out how to purify water, catch rain on a roof, even potentially making little homemade fuel tanks. Um, so it's interesting to see what they're planning. And I think it's going to be very critical to the basements update, you know, being able to go underground, having to maintain your pipe works. And it shows that they're putting a lot of thought into the longevity of the game. Uh, instead of having to be so shallow when it comes to getting fresh water, in getting you know more supplies now uh, basements you say huh um now that's an interesting aspect so project zomboid right now doesn't have basements as far as i know is that that's something that they plan on putting up soon yes that is something if you watch their or if you read back on their blog post especially the last few they actually show an image of a basement they talk about basement stairs they even have a little image of a pump with pipes running underground in between the buildings so there's going to be some pipe works and stuff that you have to go maintain and uh i think it's going to be really cool but forget about basements what i'm most excited for is the sewer systems the sewers are obviously going to be dangerous but i'd rather take my chances on one end of muldrow with the sewer system going to the other end of muldrow 
uh, and deal with the zombies down there rather than just crossing the city out in the open. <laughs> nice, very nice. Well, you know, they also have introduced a uh, new... They've been talking about a new in-depth crafting system on top of possible new professions to help expand upon it going a little bit further ahead, haven't they? Yes, uh, that's one of the things that they're focusing on. And what's really cool is they've, they've hired three new people to the team. Uh, to help expand this crafting system, one of which is just the literature itself. There's going to be a lot, 1,500 more books added. They're adding more TV channels, and they're adding more VHS tapes. So that's kind of an indication of how much they're aiming to expand that, that skill list so that you can get better crafting. Um, they did show an image of a much much improved crafting user interface including having a little forge outside that you could combine metals and and i think that's really cool oh that is really cool that is really cool now they have also added in i believe a extra six tv channels and one new radio channel i believe is when they're on what they're going to be adding in the future updates that's great. um and they talked about adding in i believe for lack of a better word more lore based pieces so like yes. bands professional trucks um uh, box trucks you know you you name it to really give the world a more lived in feel um and this is really interesting because it really puts into perspective a situation uh that really does some cool stuff i see here uh we got a comment from always streams it's crazy that this is another game that was made a decade ago. It is now thriving to the point that the, the developers are adding way more updates. Oh, I, I agree 100%. And not only are they adding just more updates, Build 41 was a complete overhaul. It was a complete facelift from the inside out. So they're really showing their stripes here as far as the longevity of the game and where they're planning. In fact, in Build 42, one of the things that they talked about is enhancing the rendering of it, making it more friendly for 4K uh, players, as well as adding more elements like the fog, the shaders to give that environment, which also ties into the uh, new fire system that they plan on installing. So it's really cool that they're thinking about all of that to make the game as immersive as they can. No, and that that's that's really cool. Um, I absolutely love the fact that they've been working on this game for so long. I know some people uh, waited forever for Build 41, but I've been here since the game was put on Steam, and I have gone from the 100% 2D graphics to the semi 3D graphics all the way up to here. And you know what, folks? I know it looks like there are more things being added and stuff, but that I think is more because the team has been able to expand. So they've been able to, uh, I guess, put, put out more content faster and actually more reliable content. Because there is one thing about the Project Zomboy team I would have to give them a little bit of credit for is that they actually do do quite a bit of testing before they ever put it out. And, uh, if you folks ever read one of the more recent articles, they talk about how they develop stuff inside single player. And one of the reasons why sometimes it takes longer to get to people is because they're trying to optimize and make sure it works for multiplayer really well before they push it, um, which is a really cool concept that they're making sure that products are available for multiplayer almost right off the get go before they uh, push it to the um, public. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and one of the things you mentioned expanding the team, I love when a game not only acknowledges their modders, but it totally embraces them as well. And I'm actually happy to say that they just hired on Fenris Wolf um, into the, their team. Um, of course, he's uh, very famous for taking over the mod ORGM Expanded. Um, so he's got a lot of uh, clout. And they, they mentioned in their blog post that Basically, he's getting familiar with the way that the game is coded from a developer standpoint, and we'll be helping them. So to have somebody from the modding community who's so experienced, who's dealt with the community on that end, coming to the table and bringing not only his knowledge on modding, new fresh ideas, the capability to take these ideas and put them in places that the developers haven't thought, but also he's one of us. He's a community member that kind of got hired to the team, which I think is really important for games to succeed. Um, and then Pat Brin, of course, is writing the uh, 
a lot of the literature, the, the VHS tapes and the uh, TV shows, and they're focusing on lore. Not only are you going to learn shows and things like that, you're going to be able to grab newspapers, read up on the events leading up to the Knox flu, including ideas of what its cause may have been. But also you're going to see when you find a picture in the game, for example, now, whenever you find a photograph, it's just labeled a photograph, but they're going to be personalized. A photograph of a smiling family, a photograph of a man and his wife on vacation in the Alps, a photograph of a birthday party. And some of those will even have descriptions on a handwritten note on the back. They're really trying to make it to where when you go in the house and you beat in the brains of a zombie lady, that you actually learn about her life and kind of get connected to the world in that fashion. Um, it's not just, oh, you got bit, you got to go. There's going to be some emotion to it, which I think is really important. Nice. Now, it's cool that they're doing this, and it really gives you some value because, like you said, it really gives you a not only an attachment to your character, but it also almost makes you kind of feel for the people that you are more or less having to take care of because they're no longer able to, well, they're going to eat you. Uh, so <laughs> it's interesting that they're trying to tie it, uh, like pull at the heartstrings a little bit because it, it's really interesting. Um, I know for a fact there are many games out there, mostly single player, that I have played where I have grown attached to the scenario environment that I've been in because they put enough lore items in there for me to do so. And I like that uh, Zomboid is actually looking to do that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and I think it'll be like, important it really too. When NPCs come out and build 43, I think that'll be important because the idea is that in the future, you'll be able to recruit some of these NPCs for your settlement. You could go into a house and start looting it and find out a lot about it. You may even find a note saying, hey, I went to our, uh, you know, shed by the lake. I'm staying there for now. And if you go there, you may find an NPC that you could recruit. You know a lot about them already because you looted their house, but also... It really gives them the opportunity that if there's a group of bandits out there that's just murdering people for their gear, you could learn that they didn't start off as bandits and you could learn their tragic backstories of what kind of turned them into who they are now. And it's fascinating because it's getting closer and closer for people to have that Walking Dead experience. No, definitely. Very, very much so. Um, and you know, I, I love all of these cool things. Let's go ahead and actually talk a little bit more about those professions because right now we have quite a few professions when you create your character on the left hand side. But Project Zomboid has talked about in one of their recent ones, I believe, in their recent Crafting Rambles uh article that they post on their news uh for their Steam uh store. They talked about how they wanted to add in more professions that gave you almost kind of like a, like your character actually used to do something. Because while there were police officers, firefighter, burglar, all these things, and they give you different, uh, what I would say, skill levels, uh, they didn't necessarily play into how people actually develop skills over a lifetime. And it's cool that they're really trying to tie into this more because the way I understood it is that when you choose a profession, it's not like you have only these levels and then you don't have anything else. You almost get like a uh, kind of how the current system works. You read a book, you get um, a XP multiplier. Well, they're saying that when you choose to be a carpenter as a profession, your carpentry level by default, always has a, like, 25% boost. Like, that never goes away because you are, that's your profession. That's what you did for a living. So they wanted to give more depth to the professions that you chose, and they're going to greatly expand on the existing professions while trying not to essentially take away from the old ones, but rather improve upon them. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more, especially since they talked about overhauling the skill system. They're going to be adding more skills. But one of the things that they said that we're going to see is some form of metallurgy, some form of being able to build electronic systems out of garbage, um, being able to stone masonry is going to be another thing that they're going to be putting in so that you could build these fortresses. Glass making is another thing that they're putting in. So you're going to be able to make glass objects. Um, and these new professions are going to definitely 
amplify our skill table and how they work. So it's good that they're giving you passive boosts as well as starting perks. All right, folks. Well, you know, I am loving all this. However, we are going to go ahead and move over to our hot takes and see what me and y'all have to talk about this week. Uh, folks, our hot takes for this week are going to be fun. I hope to actually hear what y'all has to say. Y'all, what is your hot take this week overall? My hot take is actually just kind of giving a shout out to my favorite mod, the Skill Recovery Journal. Um, it's made by Chuckleberry Farms. You can find it on the Steam Workshop, and I absolutely love it. Basically, what it does is you'll be able to create a journal and update it as time goes on. So if you level up a few skills, you could return to the skill journal and update it. Should you die, you will have to go find that skill journal again. I know some people are a little on the fence about that. Isn't that cheating? Doesn't that make the game easier? But in my opinion, you can play it any way you want. You can keep your skill journal locked up at your base where it's safe, or you can play like I do, carry it with you. And then if you die, you gotta go on an aggressive hunt for your former zomboid self to grab the skill journal off his body. But it's relatively easy to make with some glue, some empty notebooks, some leather. You can actually make yourself a skill journal. And then whenever you wanna transcribe it, you open up your crafting menu, and then you can go transcribe to journal. And then you sit there for a period of time and then little alerts will pop over your head that tells you what you're relearning. As for the options of it, it gives you a lot of ways that you could customize the options and make it so that it fits your world better. You could change the rate in which it takes to transcribe to the journal, the rate at which it takes to read the journal, as well as things like what skills can you recover? I, for one, don't think it makes sense to recover combat skills, so I would leave that checked off to where you're only learning like a survival guide, how to make plumbing. <laughs> so I, I love that mod and I, I highly recommend it to anybody. Now I see here too, that uh, these are all amazing options. And one of the things that makes me actually like that you chose to talk about this mod is folks, you can actually tell it how much of the skills percentage it recovers so you can really make it so that, like Yarl said where it's just someone jotting down their past experiences crafting notes or whatever else but it doesn't 100 percent get you all the way back to exactly where you were left off and like Yarl also said having some self-imposed restrictions never hurts to make a game a little bit more fun right absolutely absolutely and i i also like the fact that they're adding new elements to it all the time as you can see you can transcribe xp learned from tv shows or vhs so if you're one of those people like me where once the power's out you're like well that's the end of my tv watching career you can at least transcribe what you learn from those tapes into the journal and then relearn them later so it uh, it provides a lot of flexibility to how you play nice now my hot take is kind of going to my roots which is daisy but it's kind of a feature request I would like to see from Project Zomboid put into his DayZ. One of the things that I absolutely love about Project Zomboid is its complexity about its vehicle mechanics. Now, I know from a, a DayZ player standpoint, maybe that's not ideal. But one of the things I truly love about the vehicle mechanic systems is everything does damage to your vehicle. Whether you're running over dead corpses, hitting um, zombies walking around, running into a tree, or anything else, it does damage to your vehicle. The part I want to focus on is running over corpses and infected, and possibly in the future, animals. In DayZ, this doesn't happen. But in Project Zomboid, they've done it in such a way where it takes a couple of infected or zombies to, to run over to really start messing with your vehicle. Now, it may not be apparent at first what it's affecting your vehicle on, but you can start to see the side effects of it. Also, the uh, zombies in Project Zomboid can break the glass, they can scratch you, they can attack you. All sorts of things can happen. They can even actually turn your vehicle over if you get enough of on one side. Like, literally, they will rock your car until it flips. It's hilarious as heck. This is something I would love to see in DayZ. Not necessarily all these cool features, but even just the ability to make the size of a entity um, affect your daisy vehicle would be awesome. So props to Project Zomboid for actually making this a realistic or semi-realistic but fun mechanic 
where I am literally swerving to avoid zombies in the streets of Project Zomboid because I don't want to wreck that car that barely already is starting for me. <laughs> and it's funny you bring that up too because the, on the note of realism, I have noticed in my past playthroughs of the game as well as the server I hosted that when you run over zombies, they do damage to the vehicle. When you run over a live person, it does more damage to the vehicle because they're obviously not rotting corpses. That's going to be so interesting when you have to worry about deer running across the road. And if you plow into one going 60 miles an hour, the amount of damage it'll do to your car is insane. And that, that just makes me excited. No, definitely. <laughs> Which is PZ. Uh, what do you think of this major update build 42? And do you think we will see it soon? Well, actually, uh, that's a good point that you bring up. I It's going to be a few months. Like I mentioned before, we're probably going to see it in fall or winter. They're still pushing for 2023. But from the sounds of it, they're also saying, hey, don't get hyped. Don't get your hopes up. We want to make sure this is all hammered out into fine detail before we release it, which I appreciate. But uh, also... A lot of people are thinking that Build 42 means NPCs. They will not come out, even in their first stage, until Build 43. But everything they're going to be putting into the game in Build 42 is going to be building that framework. And if you're a longtime Project Zomboid player, Build 42 is going to offer you a fresh new way to experience the game. So by the time we're done playing 42 and 43 comes out, we're still going to be learning. And it's going to be amazing, especially the new fishing mechanic. Super excited about that. Nice. Very nice. Now, I know we briefly touched upon this, and um, I'm leaving the NPC part until the very end, because I can see here, like you just said, the NPC stuff is near the very end of these builds. But I did want to talk about the crafting. So we talked about the crafting overall and everything else, but what would you, Yarrow, expect or would you like to see in these crafting updates? To be honest, the more complex, the better. And I know they're trying to trim it down because if you see the tech tree now of their crafting update, it's insane. But I'd like to see more complexity. The problem I have with Project Zomboid now is if you've got a carpenter, a burglar, and a doctor, a lot of the times you can just, you can master carpentry as a doctor making the carpenter completely pointless. With the expansion of the crafting system as well as adding new skills to it, you're going to need each moving part of your team to work well together. If the doctor gets separated from you in a zombie horde, it's not, oh, well, I have level two first aid, so or level three first aid, so we should be fine. I can always read a book. It's, we got to go back for Dr. Frank. We can't leave him behind because there's just things that Dr. Frank will be able to do with crafting and otherwise that normal people cannot do. And I'm super excited about that. Nice, very nice. Now, the same question goes to our viewers currently in chat. If you guys could pick something that you wish to see in the crafting update or something you would like to see improved or uh, definitely um, uh, maybe taken out, go ahead and uh, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you guys about it because it's always interesting to hear from our viewers in our chat. Now, it's interesting the crafting update because I definitely want to see more of a positive reach towards skilled uh crafters kind of like what you were talking about where you spoke about how you know if you had like three people or three three uh trades people you were okay i really want to see where skilled people in pacific areas come into play and i believe that project zomboy talked about possibly putting a skill cap on everything you can learn with how you can invest in the skills and i absolutely love this idea being a long-time player of survival games with skill-based stuff, I love it when a community comes together, not because of them being forced to through RP or through uh, self-imposed rules, but when the game mechanics themselves encourage working as a community. And I really feel that actually can bring together more fun in a multiplayer experience because Bill Bob, who decides to split up from the community, can't do everything by himself. Mm -hmm. He might have to go and live by himself in worse conditions, and he might be a really good farmer for, let's say, but he might have to come back and trade with the major group to get nails or other basic supplies, but he can trade his farming crops and stuff for it. And what it does is it allows you not only to be alone, uh, um, a 
person who lives alone, but it also allows you to actually be part of a bigger picture community. Because that's what we always strive for in a uh, server, right? Is to be able to play with others and actually not only be able to attack them or even have some PvP moments, but also be able to interact with them in more ways than just give me your loot. That's true. And there are, they, they did mention that they are going to be focusing on giving the solo players something to look forward to. Although NPCs may not come out until build 43, some of the features that they're adding to the game, such as hunting, they're really focusing on the nomadic life. And what's amazing about it is as a nomad, you may not be the best tailor. And as those of us who know, if you have an expert tailor in the team, they can make armor that makes it so hard for zombies to get through that it is just the best. But they're still going to do that for hunters as well with leather working, tanning and things like that. So you're going to see different types of tailoring. Looks like we have a comment here from Always Dreams. I'd love to see more weather impact, whether the potential to get snowed in places or risk a very slow and dangerous travel if you leave during these rare storms. Yeah. Well, you know, you're going to have it in that... battle. You're going to have it in build 42. That's for sure. One of the things they talked about with the engine and the lighting, more fog events, more weather events, including one that they're referring to as the atomic heat, where it's a heat wave that's so bad that you can get heat stroke and massively dehydrated in the summertime. So we're going to see a lot of that RimWorld type play where there's going to be weather that severely negatively impacts it. You could even be hit by uh, early snowstorms while you're waiting for your crops to harvest. And if the temperature drops too much, the new farming system they're putting in, you might see plants die off from it. And along with that, they're going to be talking about pests, different animals that will contribute to your crops. Like you can gather ladybugs to help keep your farm pest free. And all of these animals rely on the weather as their ecosystem. So not only will the snow be difficult for you to maneuver in, but it will affect the availability of natural food and pests as well. So it could have a huge impact now. That's really cool. So if you're a farmer during this update and uh, you know a carpenter, he might be able to build your um, build you a uh, roof to keep that snow off your crops from causing them to freeze so quickly. Yeah, exactly. And with the glass maker that they're talking about doing, you can effectively actually build greenhouses. And with the atomic heat, you have to watch out for their new fire mechanic. They're talking about wildfires now. And it is going to be amazing to see those kinds of events pop off. I absolutely love all of that stuff. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the underground areas. Now, we touched about this for a little bit, but we didn't truly expand upon all the stuff. You spoke about a sewer system. Now, will that sewer system be just literally a, a of A to point B system? Or do you think it's going to be kind of a cobweb where there's plenty of different various points and stuff? Well, one of the things that they talked about is the biggest focus is not only on role play, but realism. So you're going to have the sewer run under the streets. You could even plan, if you know where the manholes are, to get from one section to another. And as long as you know the street layout from above, you should theoretically be able to navigate. What I'm excited about is what's in the sewers. Are there zombies? Eventually, will there be bandits? And with the new crafting system and some of the tools they have, you and a team can go clear out the sewers and board off certain sections of it, and then actually make your way through and create shortcuts from one end of the city or the other. The medical place you want to be able to get there you could just pop out of the manhole in the intersection right next to him and be able to scoot over to the doctor's office i think it's going to make raiding louisville insane so i'm super excited for it that's really cool because some of the videos and images i have seen about the basements and the other systems is they actually are part of the world folks they are not instances where they just mm -hmm. teleport you other places so for example basements and houses actually have a door with stairs leading to the bottom so if you accidentally leave that door open the zombies might follow or in this case of yar was what yar was saying you might leave a manhole cover open and the zombies might fall down and start pouring in the, the, the possibilities and the consequences of poor decisions is amazingly fun to think about not only that, but with them expanding the map, they might even be adding undergrounds to military bases and some of the facilities that you find throughout the map. And that will be really cool. Yeah. And one final thing about the basements, folks, I do want to make sure folks understand is that basements are not going to be just one story. Just like Project Zomboid's upper layer, they actually have multiple stories. So below, there will be multiple stories to basements and or 
like Jarl said, military complexes and sewers. So they can be incredibly complex and incredibly dangerous. But we are going to go ahead and move on to us talking about the NPCs themselves. This is an interesting topic, and we saved this um, near the end of the show, but not at the very end, because it's important for us to stress that NPCs are still being very well worked on, and anything that we do see in the future is going to be in the far future. So it is very paramount that we do pay attention to this. Now, we do have up here a legacy NPC from back, way, way back in when they first tried to introduce NPCs in the early days. Y'all, what's your opinion about the NPCs that we have seen so far, like updates, leaks, and possible news that we have got from Indie Stone? One of the things that I think is really critical to NPCs, as well as our experience with the game, is that they currently are working on adding more music and more sounds to the game, which was one of the best things they added to Build 41. And they have a team in the UK right now that is recording audio. And we're talking vocal TV vocal CDs, being able to hear a voice on the radio or on the TVs. If they can get that to function, it could even be that some of these NPCs in the long future may have some scripted audio, which would be kind of cool. Um, they're not going to implement that anytime soon, but we're talking about stage three of NPCs coming out at build 48. So this is going to be a long time down the road, but they are working on the little audio snippets coming up soon. Very nice, very nice. Now, I know that they haven't... I haven't really read much about the NPCs overall. I do apologize about that, folks. However, I have had some fun speculations about that. And some of the ones that I've come to speculate about was, are all NPCs going to be hostile? Are NPCs going to have factions where some factions are hostile upon no matter what? Or is it going to be uh, possible, for lack of a better... Uh, uh, kind of uh, reference like the uh, some of the zombie shows we see where people are initially friendly but it's not what what it seems like there's some underhanded stuff going on and your character has again what Project Zomboy is very famous for has to make choices on whether or not they wish to continue working with these people and will those choices make that person or faction eventually turn against you because I do know that uh while we do have some really good mechanics with the zombies, I am interested to see how that will work and how the NPCs might work towards players. Will they always use firearms? Will they become melee? How dangerous will they be to the player? And will we see as much customization for the NPCs as we would for the zombies? Well, that's one of the interesting things. So I was watching a bunch of videos from Mr. Atomic Duck, and one of the things that he covered is He's already seen the blog posts and heard the like officers speak on their forums. At first, the NPCs are going to be hostile, not hostile, spread throughout the map. There's not going to be a very intelligent system to it at first. But eventually, the goal is to have scenes where <coughs> you walk into a bar and somebody's got a gun held to their head. They want to put those events in there. And then from there, they are going to have factions. You're going to have like a military-based group. You're going to have more of the bandit road type group. Um, they even showed footage of other cars driving on the road at the first few days of the infection. So it does look like they're focusing on the livelihood of the NPCs. I don't think they're going to be as two-dimensional as we think. But I think it's going to end up being more like a text-based Skyrim experience. Sure, you may see some of the dialogue pop up again here or there like an adventure taking an arrow to an e but most of the time it's going to be very robust and robust enough for you to feel there's some diversity to it um and i think we're going to see that first like npc behaviors and moods and personalities coming through the animals that they'll introduce when you're trying to recruit livestock and getting them to follow you maintaining the livestock's mood giving them an ideal environment to graze i think that's where you're going to get the first taste of it is through the animals no, oh, yeah, that, that's very, that's very much true. That is very much true. Now, folks, we're going to go ahead and move over to our community response portion. We like to listen to our community and get people talking about the community. Now, Dave from uh, DayZ has come over here to speak about it a little bit with us. Uh, he is filling in for our next uh, news host, Boots on the Ground reporter. But for right now, we have Dave. 
Dave, what can you tell us about the community so far? It's an odd take, but you can't expect much from Dave. I'm sorry, Dave. Whoa, jeez. Meant no offense by it. <laughs> well, it sounds like know, Dave's I on think... board, but he's got his doubts. Yeah. Well, what what what, what do you think, y'all? You're you're the in-house Dave interpreter. What do you think he's saying? Well, uh, at first it was commenting about his hunger, so I had to kind of translate that out. But it sounds like Dave's getting excited of the fact that there's going to be more people to devour other than just the survivors who are properly equipped to brain zombies. But I think Dave might be a little biased. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Dave. Well, overall, uh, from what I've heard is that there have been people out there in the community who have been overhyping some of these updates from what I have heard and have been possibly causing people to think that these updates are going to be far more glorious and than, the, than they should be. Not that the devs aren't putting the effort, but trying to make sure that the expectations aren't so high that when these updates do come out, people aren't frustrated or mad about it. I agree with with build 41 taking four years to develop. I kind of understand why the community Days, uh, the developers of Project Zomboid probably want to set expectations a little more realistically. But we can kind of see in the, uh, <laughs> you watch YouTube videos, you read some of the forum posts, a lot of people are calling Build 42 the NPC update. And that's not really accurate. It's more the crafting and professions update. Uh, we need to be realistic. We need to understand that this is a small team of devs and they are recruiting some of the best of the best people from modding circles, from other uh like writing circles to really breathe life and lore into the game um do not expect npcs in build 42 just don't be be generous to the developers and the time that they're putting into it uh because I, if you go and you look at their community pages uh enigma gray which is an officer of their company said that uh build 41 took four years uh this update's going to be several months out Please do not, and this is a direct quote, please do not hype yourself up and expect a release within the next handful of months. And please don't expect fully functioning NPCs for a while as it's one of the last things we will implement. Oh, that's really good to hear. And it's good to hear directly from one of, one of the people who were actually trying to help people understand about what Build 42 is going to be offering. I'm really excited for the, the build 42, but you know what? Like it is said, all good things come with time. And that is what we saw with build 41. And that's what we've seen with other projects on void updates. Sure, sometimes they're a little bit rough around the edges, but overall I have a clean and fun experience most times. Well, folks, I think that is it for our community's response. Thank you very much for showing up and standing in, Dave, until we find ourselves another boots on the ground reporter for Project Zomboid. I'm pretty <sighs> sure he appreciates it or she. Oh, no, we're not replacing you, Dave. We, we promise you there will be pigs for you to eat. We guarantee it. We're not replacing you. <laughs> it, it's just a <laughs> listen, going from <sighs> Russia to Kentucky, it's a okay, Dave. You, you got the job. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's time to move on. Oh my god, I'm done. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Well, let's go ahead and just talk about what we've talked about on this show. Now, the show overall has been talking about Project Zomboid and the future updates, NPCs, basements, crafting updates, lore, expansions, and so much more. There was so much to cover in this episode, and I feel like we barely scratched the surface. Folks, I appreciate everyone being here, and I am so happy that you all have come here. Don't forget to hit that like button and to leave a comment or be around. I hope to see you folks next time, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Now, just before you go ahead and run off, it is important to note that this is May, and May is Mental Health Month. Mental health awareness is essential to our overall well-being, and it's time to increase mental health awareness reduce stigma, and promote resources for those who may be struggling. If you are feeling overwhelmed or just need someone to talk to, ask your health care provider or contact the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP or visit www.findsupport.gov. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Stay strong.